everything that was done was intentional and it was giving back. It was nurturing, nurturing the soul, nurturing the body, nurturing the mind and nurturing the community. And these are aspects that we lose sight of so quickly. Often I think about this, how back in the day when we were in tribes and we lived outside, we had this deep reverence and this deep connection with nature and with our being. We were so intentional because we had to. We didn't have the luxury of being consumers and being mindless. If we wanted to stay alive, we needed to be focused and we needed to be aware and we needed to be really in touch with the present moment because right like if you weren't something could come out of somewhere and kill you and because we had to get our own water because we had to forage our own clothing because we had to forage our own food because we had to hunt and gather and basket weave and all of these things it was like rest Rest was sacred because you got to rest after a hard day's work. And I know that I often talk and teach about how you don't have to work hard to make money and to be abundant because this whole working hard thing is really a societal programming. But there's a difference between, my arm is getting so tired, I'm gonna sit down. We used to have to be intentional because we were collecting all of these things. We were doing the work and there's a difference between hard work and then actually doing fulfilling, fruitful, necessary work. Like when you have a garden, that work is fulfilling. It's needed. It's nurturing your soul and it's giving you foods to nourish yourself. And it's also allowing you to cook healthy meals with love for your family and your loved ones that you planting those seeds in that garden, that is nurturing, that is giving back, that's understanding that everything is connected. Even if you don't get this while you have a garden, look at your garden differently because everything is connected, right? So when you have a garden, you are planting a seed and you are nurturing it, nourishing it, giving it love, water, sunlight, which humans need to, right? you tend to it, allow it to grow, and then you get to have fruitful labor out of it. So yes, did it take time, energy, and did you have to get your hands dirty? Absolutely. Was it worth it? Absolutely. Was it giving back? Absolutely. These are the things that we used to do also because we lived in tribes. So because we weren't so seg segregated into these little boxes, little boxes on the hillside, I always think of <laughs> the weeds theme song. Anyway, but because we weren't so separated in these little boxes, we were together in tribes. So it was like, what are you really good at? I'm really good at hunting. This obviously is me. <laughs> I'm really good at hunting. Okay, you go hunt. I'm really good at tending to children. Okay, you go tend to the children. I'm really good at cooking. Okay, you're gonna cook. You know, back in the day, it wasn't like, oh, so you're not good at math? Do more math. Because they weren't even learning math anyway because they didn't need to unless they were doing astronomy. <laughs> anyway, so it was like everything that was done was intentional and it was giving back. It was nurturing, nurturing the soul, nurturing the body, nurturing the mind and nurturing the community. And these are aspects that we lose sight of so quickly in this modern day hustle and bustle society. So when I say hard work, there's a difference between hard work and necessary work. Necessary work that's fulfilling and nurturing your soul, your community, your mind, your body, versus being programmed to live in a rat race 
where you're constantly going from screen to screen to screen, where you're never turning your mind off. So like people forget your mind is not only an organ which needs rest and it doesn't rest when you sleep either. So that doesn't count, <laughs> not necessarily. Sleeping eight hours is absolutely essential or whatever works best for you. I'm a nine hour gal. I, I've done process and elimination. So like whatever works best for you, but sleep is essential for your mind, for your body, everything, but it doesn't necessarily stop your mind. Your mind is quite active during sleep. So if your mind's always going because you in your 3D rat race world are constantly doing all these things, going from thing to thing to thing, always worrying, always fearing, always projecting into the future, your worst case scenarios, you're going to get diseased in your body. You're going to get depression. You're going to have fatigue, adrenal fatigue. You're going to have anxiety. You're going to suffer from mental health issues. And then many of those can result in more disease in the body because then you have more unhealthy habits contributing to it. And it just starts a snowball effect. And, and a snowball effect where you're constantly believing that you, you have to work so hard that you are, are sacrificing your own well-being to constantly be working, that you're not getting enough sleep, that you're not nurturing yourself, that you're not giving your family the attention it needs or your community the gifts that you have. These are how we pay back and pay it forward. And that's really, what we came here to do as humans to give back to know ourselves to remember that we are connected to every single thing separation is the illusion of this 3d existence but ultimately you and i are one everything is one so when we remember that and we nurture that we realize that Sacrificing ourself and our family's needs and our community's needs is never going to be the way to have an abundant and sustainable life because that's you literally becoming a slave to money. And that's what they talk about in the teachings. It's not that money is bad. It's your attachment to money that's bad. And look at what the Buddhists teach. Attachment in general, attachment is really an affliction of the human condition, right? Because we get attached to these things. Even animals, they don't typically have many attachments unless they're domesticated and we give them toys and things of that nature. And we teach kids from a young age, it's okay to be attached because it's like, this is your favorite toy. You can always have this toy. And it's not like, it's just a toy. Ultimately, it only has the meaning that you give to it. And you just want to be careful of the meanings that you associate with things because that's where affliction will come from. And that's where it's going to constantly combat you on your spiritual journey. So if you are constantly having to navigate through all of these things that are distracting in the human world, then how are you able to ascend into the spiritual world? And while selfishness, when you only care about yourself, is negative when it's all consuming and there's no intention to give back, there is a difference between realizing that in order to show up as your highest self, in order to have your cup be full so it can overflow to others, and to really be a symbol of how you can live your life, you have to take time to have devotional practices. You, you have to meditate. Like there's no if, ands, or buts about that. You have to meditate. Just the conversation then becomes how often and how to, but ultimately all of that is noise. It's just distraction. What's important is that you get still with your mind. You get still with your body. You get still with your breath. Because I always tell people when you pray, that's you speaking to the universe. When you meditate, that's allowing the silence so that the universe can speak back to you. If you're constantly praying and asking, and, and I don't care what your devotion is, but 
if you're constantly praying, but you're never allowing time for the universe to speak back to you, and if you're getting so tripped up in this hustle and bustle, then you're not going to see the signs that the universe is putting clearly in front of you because your attention isn't focused on the present moment. Your attention is focused on the next amount of money you can get, the next achievement you can have, the next, the next, the next, whatever that looks like for you. See the difference between working hard and doing necessary work because this is something that is very important to understand when you start going through a spiritual path. Right now is one of the most beautiful times to be alive because we have access to so much more information. But do you allow yourself to sit with the information? Do you allow it to be absorbed into your consciousness? Do you apply the information? Allowing yourself to evolve in these times this is really what's important because if we're constantly learning if we're constantly relying on other people and we're not using the information to better ourselves so that we can show up better in our community so that we can be better examples for our children so that we can be better partners for our partners so we can be better to ourselves so that we can create a better world see everything is cyclical everything is holistic nothing is separated and when we live in a modern society like this it's really easy, really easy to get distracted, to get caught up in the noise, to feel uncomfortable in the silence, <sighs> to fight against it because you've been taught not to love yourself. And if you've lived X amount of years up until this point, not loving yourself, what are you going to find when it's just you and yourself and no distractions? And this is the thing, right? Growth is uncomfortable. When I was letting ghost out today, I was looking at the trees and I like to give homage back to Gaia, to mother nature, to earth, because we are all connected. Everything is energy. And I speak to the trees often. And I'm just going to start coming out with the spiritual things that I do because I'm really feeling called that like these messages are necessary. So this is these are the things that I do like honestly and I was saying thank you trees thank you for showing us what strength looks like thank you for showing us what it looks like to bury your roots and to have your roots grow a solid foundation which no one can see but it connects you at a deeper level to everyone else of your kind. The roots of the trees aren't separated. While we see the trees growing up, we don't see below the ground. And the trees actually communicate through their roots. And if one tree isn't doing well, the other trees will push nourishment to that tree. Because though we see separation because we've been taught to rely on what we see, while we haven't been taught to know that what we see is subjective by what we think, believe, and know and say. So it's all an optical illusion and we should really, we should really think about that. This world isn't dependent on sight. This world speaks in energy. The universe speaks in energy. We are all energetic beings and just like the trees, when we aren't doing well as a society, it means that the people within the society aren't doing well and vice versa. And it's truly because we don't have these community aspects anymore. When we're in these small communities, when we're in these forests together, we get to support each other. We get to allow each other to have time to do what we're good at and to give back to the community so that we feel this purposeful living. So many people are looking for their purpose right now because we have forgotten that 
Your purpose is to exist. Your purpose is to be. Your purpose is to remember this deep oneness that connects all of us. The law of one is a law of the universe. We are all one. There are so many religions that are based on this and then they just add a bunch of names and nuances to explain this. But it all comes down to oneness. We are all one and when we live intentionally, when we live mindfully, when we live purposefully, we're never looking for achievements outside of the now. We're focused on being present in the moments that we have and using our senses as delightful tools to experience this 3D world while still having a foundation of spiritual practices that can support us in knowing that we are connected to source. I don't care what term you use there. There's so many terms that can be used. It doesn't matter. What matters is the understanding behind it. Do you understand that your consciousness is connected with everyone else's? And the more you work on yourself and you work on your beliefs and you work on your thoughts and you work on what you consume, it's gonna take a village and we need to start doing this together so that way we can shift the consciousness of this planet so that we we can move forward the last few years have shaken everything that we have based our foundation on as humans especially in the western world and it's not a bad thing we're being called to look at and ask is this really how we want to keep living is this truly the legacy that we want to leave behind for mankind that we were given this beautiful earth to live on and we destroyed it. We were given all of these different continents and beautiful people who lived in those continents and survived well. And then we fought wars, killed each other and had genocides. That's not what we came here to do and that's not what we came here to be. And it's never too late to change your ways. It's never too late to shift and the more we come together and the more we have loving awareness, I truly think this is how we're going to propel this new paradigm. And this is what the age of Aquarius has called us to do. And perhaps because I have a stellium in Aquarius and I'm an Aquarius sun that I just feel like I have this fire under my feet. And it's like, yes, these practices that you've been doing, this spiritual, worship that you have been conducting, these ceremonies that you have, this relationship, this connection to earth, to yourself. While yes, it's been helping you, you need to share it. And you have to understand that not everyone's going to get this. Everyone can only meet you at the level that they've met themselves. And I understand that. Some of this might have gone over people's heads. Some people might be like, what is she talking about? But there are other people that are like, I feel this in my soul. So I don't know, I got on here to talk to you about this download that I had last night and now I've been talking for 22, 22 minutes. How beautiful is that? But I already said it on Instagram. So if I didn't, there's a post that is on my Instagram at Alexa Ray Smith that says feeling lost. And that was the download I had last night in my meditation. This was a collective message. This is something that needed to come out for the collective. So maybe that message was for you. Anyway, I uh, was gonna add this as a segment to my vlog, but this video is so long that I'm just going to leave it be. Oh, well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you for receiving this message, this download, this guidance. Let me know if this spoke to you. Let me know if you want to hear more messages like this. I feel like this video is more like a journal entry or a conversation I would have with myself because when I get really, really deep in spirituality and I question this holographic universe that we live in and the fact that we aren't here, but we are here and the duality of existence 
at a finite point of existence and are we just the quantum observer of it all but really a god who has separated themselves to experience the world and to have company <laughs> these are the type of conversations i have with myself so yeah let me know how this resonated with you uh it actually feels kind of good to share this i have been intimidated honestly to share things at this spiritual level because it's like i go deep and i go high like i ascend but i go into the depths into the abyss and that's heavy but it's also light like you know so when we really it's like philosophy meets metaphysics meets quantum physics meets spirituality meets all of the things and and that's really where i geek out and that's really where i always have so yeah maybe i'll start sharing more of these because it was pretty cool i have been sharing more spiritual downloads on my instagram and I do have a TikTok where I am sharing guidance there as well. So hang out with me, leave some comments, drop some love, and I'll see you in the next video.